did everything. All right, guys, we are back in free code camp in one of the API projects for the back end certification. We're, we are doing the timestamp microservice. Now, let's talk about what this is before we jump into anything else. Uh, what we're trying to do is when we, let's jump to this link right here, is whether we put in a, what they call a natural date, which is December 2015, uh, something like that, it returns the date in its natural format as well as in its Unix format. Now, if you're not sure what Unix is, it's basically a way to do date in um, JavaScript that is, takes like seconds from 1970 and then you do some math to get a date out of this number here. But what we want is that when we go to, the, to an endpoint that our, our Node.js application will return this JSON data. So if we go ahead and pass in this string right here into our browser or in our postman, which we'll be doing, uh, it should be returning a certain date. So in this case, it's going to return this info and all that's, we're going to be writing the code to do that right now. That's all this entire project is. It's a really good project to get started, to get comfortable with building out your first Node.js application. It's got two things that we wanted to do. One, you input a Unix date, that number, then it returns the Unix date and it returns the natural date. And two, we put in that natural date and from there it returns the Unix and natural. And I guess three, if it returns something that's not valid, it should return null. It should, shouldn't just make up some shit. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into this. Now, if you're not familiar with this editor or how this is gonna work, uh, Let's start off by creating our app.js. Now, some people may call this server.js, uh, but I'm just gonna call it app.js. From within our app.js, we are going to have to do a few things before we get started. Uh, let's bring up our terminal. If you're using, if you're using um, Visual Code Studio, you can just drag and drop it in here. Can I, can I make this full screen? There we go and control plus that might be too big and what we're gonna do all right guys so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna install npm so that we can install some dependencies that we're gonna need if you're not familiar with dependencies basically to make our node slash express um, app work our back-end service work we have to we have to basically just load some things that we need to use kind of like how you would import bootstrap or or um, another like angular or something like that except a little bit more complex so let's go ahead and install npm let me look at my notes here and it, it, i'm still relatively new so i don't have all these commands memorized but i imagine you use you do these things quite a bit it'll be easy enough so what we want to do is npm init And that's going to initialize our package.json if you're not familiar with package.json um, it's basically, and we're just gonna continue. Oh, we have to name our timestamp. Uh, so just name this app.js. I think this was actually, I think I wasn't supposed to create our app.js yet. So you'll see we're going through a bunch of stuff. Cool. So we have our app.js, our package.json. Uh, you saw me skipping through a lot of stuff there. It's basically um, just a bunch of kind of, not pseudocode, but a bunch of details for what we're trying to do. You don't really need to worry about it too much. You'll see here I made a, a mistake. You don't necessarily have to go through the terminal to fix this, but instead let's go ahead and actually just rename this file to timestamp for our package.json. Pretty cool. So we passed it in there. Don't worry about that. So in our app.js, we have to begin by instantiating those those uh, dependencies that we wanted. Basically, the packages that we're going to use. Because we're going to be using cores. We're going to be using something called body parser. And we're going to be using something called express. Now, you don't really have to know what any of that means. Just kind of understand these are the standard files that you happen to use when you're 
when we're getting when you're making applications most of the time with Node.js. Now from here, what we have to do is we have to go in and install those dependencies. The way that we do that is npm install. And one second, let me look at my notes here. And that is npm install. npm install, where are we? Uh, dash dash save. And then the name of the package. We'll start with express. And notice that we're doing it on the root directory. So we're going to do that. It'll take a second or two. It's running. And we're going to do the same thing for cores and body parser now. So we've got our no modules. We got some more stuff in there. The next thing we're going to do is npm install dash dash save. And this is going to be cores. And the, the gist of uh, Express basically will make our life easier. We're going to use it a lot for handling HTTP requests or API calls and stuff like that. Um, cores allows us to make cross-origin requests. Uh, this is going to basically make our application not reject requests if they're coming from different places. And then body parser. To be fully honest with you, I still don't fully understand why we use body parser. But I'm sure somebody in the comments can tell you why I was just told by um, is it body dash parser told by um, an individual who uh, engineered truths who gave me a rundown of node that this is helpful to have um, so we're doing all our setup right now and uh, I, I don't want you to be too intimidated if you're new but uh, just kind of accept it that this is part of the process <laughs> that's uh, that's the gist of it. But we're we're there now. We're we're there for install. So we installed everything that we wanted. The next thing that we have to do is we have to instantiate those dependencies. Uh, so we want to um, we'll put we'll put some comments as we go along here. Basic required imports. Oops. Yeah. Basic required imports for Node. Js and um, what we're going to do here is we're going to create an instance of express. So var express is equal to, oops, excuse me, require. We're basically requiring an instance of express that we're going to use later. And let's go ahead and pass that in. So it knows that we're going to be doing this for all the dependencies we just added. So body parser, and this is going to be equal to require body dash parser. And then we're going to do the same thing for cores, where just var cores is equal to require. And then in here, we are going to pass in cores. Cool. So we've basically created uh, an instance of, we've instantiated body parser cores and um, a couple other things. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create an instance of our app, or uh, we've created an We've basically in variables set these things, but now we have to kind of link all of them together. Put my comment here. So we're gonna create an instance of Express for our app that we have in a variable here. So we're gonna call this var app is equal to module.exports. And this is equal to Express. So we're basically creating our Express application that we're gonna use down the road here. And then we're gonna say, look, uh, our app.use our body parser Dot JSON. Again, this is just more instantiation of stuff. We're, we're doing all the setup, guys. Um, we're almost there, though. So app.use cores. All right, boys, we are there. So now we have to check, is everything working properly? We Because we installed some stuff. We did a lot of stuff. Before we move farther with our logic and everything, let's see that we're actually we're actually getting this to work as we want it to work right um, so we're gonna we're, what we're gonna do is down at the bottom and uh, keep in mind that you should have your have this as the last thing that you're doing is we're gonna take our app and say listen on the port number this is port 3000 and we're gonna have a callback function you could define this to be uh, a bunch of different numbers uh, I'm just using 3000 um, so to find a function here, 
that's going to listen when that 3000 port is hit and we just want to console that log um, working let's save that and now in our terminal what we want to do is launch our node server all right, so let's test our node server. Again, make sure you're in the root directory. So this is my file path. Uh, you, you should have something similar. And the way that we can launch node is just by saying node. We're now in here. And what we want to do is we want to call our file. Um, so let's actually control C if you want to exit out. The... So we want to do node and then we want to do app.js. OK, so we got an error here. Let's look at our error app.user is not a function okay so we have a little bit of a um, a little bit of a, a mistake there you see we exited out of our server because we're back at the URL path the next thing that we can do is go ahead and make sure we don't have any other issues so we're say node.app.js and you'll see now it's console logging working so that means that we're in there um, however if we were to actually make changes and say it's working we want to change that uh, you'll notice that when we, let me fix my quotations here, you'll notice that when we save and we were to call node, we're to, the only way for us to get this update is to actually close this, close the app as we just did. But now if we go, but we don't want to have to do that for every single time that we're, we save our application. So instead, what I want you to do, and I've already done it, but you can install something called Nodemon, which basically every time you save your app.js file will rerun your node server and update it. Otherwise, we're going to be working with old data. To do that, you, you would put in the command npm install dash dash save dash g and then uh, Nodemon. That's all you would need to do to get it installed. Um, so uh, since I already have it installed uh, globally, I'm not going to worry about that. But now when we hit Nodemon, it's going to launch our server and now if we were to change this back to working and save it you'll see it runs again and now we have our updated content hey guys thanks for watching the video if you're interested in coding bootcamp check out devmountain.com where housing is included in your price of tuition and don't forget to like comment subscribe and share and support me on patreon i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching